Hello, fellow parishioners at Advent St. Nicholas. My name is Tom Capper, and from the United States, I'm going to be giving you the message today for the scripture that we have and for the musical message that I'm going to give you. The title of today's uh, message is Broken to Pieces, But My Soul is Still Standing. Now that came from the story of myself in bringing instruments to Ecuador and Guatemala. So I'm going to get a cello for you that's been partly damaged. And if you look carefully at the cello, you can see that it's been smashed pretty thoroughly, but there's a pole standing up. Now in Spanish, that's called La Alma Adentro, or the soul within. We call it a sound post in English. But that sound post is crucial to the sound of a cello. The two sides of the wood vibrate in a beautiful harmony together to give a violin or a cello that incredible tone that we all come to love in the hands of an excellent player. So, that's why I call the title of this sermon, Broken to Pieces, But My Soul is Still Standing. Now on either side of me right now, you will see 24 syllables in words. And the piece I'm going to play for you by Bach has a really interesting section where there's a drone on the open G. And it's repeated 48 times. So what I've done is I've superimposed my own philosophy on what Bach might be saying through his music. You could do it yourself with different words. Clearly Bach, when he wrote music for the Lutheran Church in the 1700s, his aim was to help people with worship in the Christian setting. Now, the music I have is instrumental, but I've put words to it to assist the listener to be in a worshipful, worshipful mode of listening. So here are the words in about the tempo that I'll play it. Sincerely I ask you, please reveal destiny of my heart's potential to follow Christ within. Now you'll hear it a little more obviously when I bow it. cello, you'll hear that G repeated over with. And these words may assist you or may not, but for me it's a guide to how do we use this beautiful music of Bach to aid us in worship. So I'm going to move these music stands out of the way anymore. I don't really need them. And the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is we have scripture. And to me, there are three basic things in today's scripture, as I'll reflect. The first is David as chosen. That would be King David. The Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So how do we feel inside? David had a good heart for leadership for the Israeli people, and that's what God was looking for. The second theme in Scripture is the blind man as chosen. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. So with this limitation of being blind, it's not to see it as a curse, but it's a tremendous opportunity, and I'll explain that in my message later. 
And then the third thing is the reality of the choice that we have to make if we want to follow God. We can choose to be revived on the right path, like it says on Psalm 23, if we seek and find it. But this also means that we seek for the revival of our soul, even if the path goes through the valley of death, as it says in the psalm. So here's my message, broken to pieces, but my soul is still standing. And the spirit of David, excuse me, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David. What a wonderful imaginative happening for David. To, to be a poor shepherd boy, called forth to rule a kingdom. Oh, to only have the spirit come mightily upon us in some way like that. What then is for us? Do we wait for someone from the patriarchy, like Samuel, to come and anoint us with a horn of oil? Probably not. What we really might seek is a woman or man who's a friend or a private place of prayer for revelation to help us look at the condition of our heart, our soul, not our outward appearance, and this may help us realize the spiritual inheritance that we have earned with the destiny with God and purpose in our life. This purpose in some ways modeling unconditional love for others as the life of Jesus taught us. For most of us, like David, dramatically being chosen, it doesn't happen this way. To, to have our faith declared publicly by a prophet. But, oh, if we could only live as children of the light and not stumble in darkness, that may be just our true wish. Most of us stumble when we try to find God's will for our life. And if we are honest with ourselves, we may wonder if that is even possible. Now, in the parable of the blind man, the blind man was viewed by the Pharisees as being born into sin, as if his blindness was a sign of his limitations, of his inability to ever arise from being a sinner. But we know that the man who could not see but later is able to, he asked Jesus to declare who he is, and Jesus does this. But I don't view this as the main point. Now that the man can see, the Pharisees think two things. They declare he's an imposter and he can't really see, and there's no way he's totally forgiven. Yet, he is in both cases. He can see, he has his sight, and he's forgiven. What this does to the blind man is it puts him in a state, what I would call of astonishment. It says this in my translation in the Bible. He is utterly astonished at his new state of being forgiven and also of being able to see. Another word I might think of, he's astonished, dumbfounded, astounded, bewildered, such a huge mystery. How did this happen? So with these two things, he doesn't know where J Jesus came from, but he's astonished that he can now see. The blind man at first believes the Pharisees that his blindness is the result of his sin. But yet God will listen to him and someone who worships God and obeys God's will. The blind man does this, accepting his freedom from sin. And then he's astonished that he's free. Is it possible in our own lives to reach the same state of astonishment? So what I think of with this cello message I'm giving you today is I have a friend, Bill, who's a nurse. And he is towards the end of his career. And his great gift is being personal with the babies, whispering them. He works in a children's hospital. He's made train sets and lobbies for kids. He just loves his work. Well, he's asked to spend all this time now charting at a computer, and he just doesn't feel used correctly. So 
I had some smashed instruments and I gave him the chance to put them back together and I sent him a photo of some of the cellos he repaired from a child in Ecuador. And I asked Bill about this, would you do another one? I hate to bother you with the time. And Bill looked at me and he was astonished when he looked at me. He said, Tom, we've got babies that we hold and nurses. And this is what Bill said to me. He said, Tom, anybody can do this. People know how to take care of babies. But if I don't repair this cello and have you take it down there, that kid's not going to have a cello. The music will die. So this picture Bill saw of this young girl playing a cello that she wouldn't have had if Bill hadn't repaired it, he views that in new eyes. Wow, I brought music. I feel important. And yet here he is healing babies, and he's like feeling like anybody can do that. So in a way, Bill is astonished with what he can do through repairing a cello, having me be the agent of delivery, and then having the child make music to bring joy to their life. What a great way to see a new way, a new way to have hope. The man who was once blind <clears throat> has new power in that he sees. And whatever condemnation he was under for being a sinner, he's now free of this. I suppose in our own lives, a similar miracle that could happen for us could be that we are finally free from grinding debt that we can't get away from. We can be maybe free finally from a persistent depression that always comes back and we always end up being down and it just won't go away. Or maybe some intense physical pain that, go, that won't go away. You know, I don't know. But when I play this song, sincerely I ask you, please reveal destiny of my heart's potential to follow Christ within. As I play that music, it gives me hope. And when I hear this music, I know that God has touched me. So now I'm going to play for you Sweet Three by Bach on the cello. This is the prelude. When I get to the section where there's the repeated open strings, I'm going to play in less than an artistic manner that this is usually done because I'm going to play the open G's so that you can think the words if you want to sincerely. And there are 24 syllables in what I showed you on the music stands before, and we'll hear the G 48 times, so you can repeat it twice in your heart if you want to. <laughs>
give you a heads up on something that'll be happening in the future. I'm going to be scanning some music to Ben for piano, Sherry on flute, and Anna on violin. It's a beautiful preludium by Shostakovich written for trio. And I'm going to play just the melody for you as a way of signing off to let you know I'm sending you some music and I'll be down there as things improve to play music for you again. Preludium by Shostakovich. <laughs> Oh, no. 